So stoichiometry is the application, the use of balanced chemical equations. Uh, what we can do is, if we know the balanced equation for a chemical reaction, we can make specific predictions about what will happen in that reaction. For instance, if you're given a certain mass of, prod of reactant, you can predict how much product you should get out of the reaction. And that's what we're going to do here. So I have a balance and there's a small weighing dish on the balance, and I've zeroed the balance. And what we're going to do is mass some magnesium metal. Uh, and we're going to mass about 0.12 grams, roughly. Uh, and as you'll see, that's all we'll need for the reaction that's about to happen. Okay, I'll take off one piece there. <coughs> Actually, we'll go with that. So our initial mass of magnesium metal is 0 0.15, let's close the lid there, 155 grams, 0.155 grams. Now what we're going to do then is that we're going to take that magnesium metal and we're going to react it with hydrochloric acid. So what I have set up here is a way of collecting gas as a product of a chemical reaction. Uh, many chemical reactions produce various gases, and this is a setup for collecting the gas. So what will happen is that I'll put the acid in this flask of hydrochloric acid. This is 0.5 molar hydrochloric acid, low concentration, but it will do. And then what I'll do is once I add the magnesium, I'll put this stopper on the flask. The other end of the, st um, the stopper has a tube connected to it, and the other end of the tube runs up into this glass jar. Now, right now, the glass jar is filled with water, and I've inverted the glass jar into this pool of water. Uh, we call this collecting gas over water. This is a technique developed several hundred years ago by early chemists. And what will happen is, as the, as the magnesium reacts in the flask, the uh, hydrogen gas will be produced, and it will bubble through this tube and up into the glass jar. <clears throat> the glass jar will be filled with hydrogen gas at the end of the reaction. Is that we'll want to calculate the volume of hydrogen in the glass jar. To do that, we're going to measure the height of gas in the jar in centimeters. We'll use a ruler to do that. And then we'll use a little bit of simple geometry to calculate our volume uh, by using the formula for volume of a cylinder. Okay, so let's try it. Here's our magnesium from just a moment ago. I'm going to put that in the flask. We're going to watch it bubble. And then you want to watch for this glass jar to fill with, with gas, which will be hydrogen gas. Okay, there we go. Check out the bubbling in the flask, and then again, the air filling up the glass jar. Um, all the magnesium is reacted with hydrochloric acid. Uh, it's all dissolved, and we have a beaker full of magnesium chloride solution. And the hydrogen gas produced is now trapped in this jar. Uh, that's our hydrogen produced from the reaction. Now, <clears throat> we want to see how our prediction matches up with what we actually produced in the reaction. So I'm going to measure this, and I'm going to measure the approximate height of the bubbles in centimeters, and get down here at eye level, and it looks like we have about, let's see, about 7.4 centimeters. So the bubble height is 7.40 centimeters. There you go. So we'll use that in just a moment to calculate the volume of the bubbles. 
All right, now to demonstrate that this is indeed hydrogen gas, and this is pure hydrogen gas in the jar, I'm going to do what's called a hydrogen test. Basically, if you have a mass of hydrogen, or what you think is hydrogen, uh, if I hold a flaming match to it, it should ignite very quickly uh, and form water. Uh, the heat from the match and this initiates a reaction where the hydrogen reacts with oxygen in the atmosphere, and it forms water vapor, basically. So take a look here. Um, if it's hydrogen, you will see and hear something. And there it is. So that loud pop and a little bit of flame, that's your positive hydrogen test that tells us that, yes, there is hydrogen gas in here. And if we look closely, you see a little bit of water vapor on the glass. That's water produced during the reaction, our hydrogen reacted with oxygen to form water vapor. So again, in stoichiometry, we're going to use balanced chemical equations to make predictions about what will happen in a chemical reaction. So here we have the reaction that you just witnessed. Magnesium, a solid metal, reacts with hydrochloric acid, which is an aqueous solution. The AQ, meaning the acid, <clears throat> is dissolved in water. They react the products, we get magnesium chloride, and that's also an aqueous water-based solution, and we get hydrogen gas. And of course, the hydrogen gas is what we capture in the glass jar and then measure. Now, what we want to see here is based on our initial mass of magnesium metal, how much hydrogen should we have produced in the reaction? So if you remember, we started with 0.155 grams of magnesium metal, 0.155. Now, when you do stoichiometry problems, you're going to use the factor label method. So when you do the factor label method, the amount you're given to start with, you should put over 1. And you know, I talked about that a bit in that section on factor label method. Now, with stoichiometry problems, here we're going from grams to liters, which will be similar to going from grams to grams. Given grams of a of one item, how many grams or how many liters of some other item should you get from the reaction? So our next step then will always be, in this kind of problem, to go from grams to moles. So in our next fraction, we want to put one mole of magnesium on the top, because again, those are the desired units we want to get to, so those are going to be in the numerator in our next fraction one mole, because at this point, we just want to convert this to moles of magnesium. So one mole over 24.31 grams of magnesium. For magnesium metal, that's the formula mass, which for elements, their formula mass is the same as their average atomic mass on the periodic table. There's our periodic table right here. Again, the average atomic mass listed for magnesium, we're going to use that as our formula mass for that element. Now, in our next step, then, our numbers in our next step are going to come directly from our chemical equation, from our balanced equation, which if we balance this equation, and we need to do that, we have one magnesium here, one magnesium here. We have two chlorines and two hydrogens here. We only have one of each here. So to balance this equation, pretty simple, we'll put a 2 in, in front of the hydrochloric acid. And what that tells us is that in the reaction, magnesium reacts with hydrochloric acid in a 1 to 2 ratio. It almost be like if you had a recipe and you said, all right, we need two parts flour to one part water. So for this next fraction, we're going to use numbers, our coefficients from the balanced equation. So we want to go from moles of magnesium to moles of hydrogen of H2. So moles of magnesium will go on the bottom, because we want to cancel that out. And moles of hydrogen will go on the top, so moles H2. Which, by the way, when you write out this reaction, hydrogen is H2 because it's one of seven elements that are diatomic meaning that by themselves in their pure form, 
they naturally link up with one another to make pairs. There are seven elements like that. Those are all listed on the back of your periodic table. There's a list of those. So our numbers from the balanced equation. For magnesium, the coefficient is 1. I don't have anything there. That means it's just 1. So 1 mole of magnesium reacts to produce 1 mole of H2, of hydrogen gas. Again, we have a 1 there because we didn't even put any coefficient. So we'll put a 1 there. So 1 mole of magnesium produces 1 mole of hydrogen gas. Moles of magnesium cancel out. Grams of magnesium cancel out. And we're left with moles of hydrogen. Now for the final step, if we were going from grams to grams, in this final fraction, we would put grams of hydrogen over moles of hydrogen. And your grams of hydrogen would be its formula mass, which in this case for H2 is 2.02 grams per mole. Now here it's going to be a little bit different because we want to know liters since we're measuring the volume of the gas. Now, as it turns out, one mole of any gas at normal conditions is 22.4 liters. So what we'll do here in our final step is put 22.4 liters of hydrogen <clears throat> over one mole of hydrogen. So moles of H2 cancel out. And we're left with liters of hydrogen as our units in the denominator. And that's what we're looking for. Now, our final step then is to do the math. When you do the math, you get 3.472 divided by 24.31. Basically, you multiply everything across the top, and you multiply everything across the bottom, and then divide the numerator product by the denominator product. When you do that, you end up getting, and I'm going to round this according to sig figs of our initial measurement, three significant figures you end up with 0 0.143 liters of hydrogen gas. So again, what that's saying is, if we put in 0.155 grams of magnesium into this reaction, we should get out 0.143 liters, or 143 milliliters of hydrogen gas. Now let's see how that stacks up to what we actually got from the reaction. Okay, now to compare our actual produced hydrogen to our prediction, uh, I measured the bubble height of the, of the jar, and our bubble height was 7.4 centimeters, 7.40. Now, to calculate the volume of the cylinder, if you remember a little bit of geometry, volume equals pi r squared h. h is the height, 7.4. 4 times pi, 3.14, times the radius of the jar squared, which is 2.6 squared. So if you do that calculation, you'll get the volume of gas in the jar. When we do that, we get 157 milliliters, or 0.157 liters, which is fairly close to our prediction. Okay. Now, you might think, OK, well, wait a minute. We, have, we actually got more than what we predicted what happened. Well, you know, there are always sources there. You know, for instance, when I set up the jar, there was actually a small amount of air already in the jar before the reaction happened. So that extra little bit of air is adding to this. We can do something called percent yield, which is where we calculate what percent of our prediction we actually Got. So to do that, it would be 157 over 143 times 100, and that comes out to 110%. So again, we got more than what we predicted, but again, in this case, in the setup, in the jar, there's a little bit of extra air already there before the reaction started. So there's a stoichiometry problem. Knowing what goes into the reaction, we can make a prediction about what should come out of the reaction.